Hey guys, I'm in Hawaii, and as you can see behind me, we're at Skydive Hawaii, and I've got Taj Burrow. I don't know who's more scared, me or him, but I'm gonna go skydiving for my first time. I think he's done it once before, so definitely I'm the more scared of it. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Hips forward, hands back, yeah. More like that. More like that, yeah. How, how long do we free fall for? Could be the rest of your life. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> We're in it together, mate. We're going to be all right. Okay. I'm not scared. No, no. no you're... Oh, what's this? I've got a band-aid there. I mean, a rubber band. <laughs> rubber band? What's a rubber band? How's old? Gets all his gear on. <laughs> and then goes, i got to pee. Yeah, that was all time. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> that was all time. Amazing. Taj. Hey, Taj. Taj. <laughs> that was all time. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> How'd you go, mate? <laughs> Shit, scared. I don't know if I got something in my pants or not. <laughs> oh, for sure you do. <laughs> Mate, that is a fucking experience, isn't it? <laughs> that that was crazy, epic, man. Oh, thank you. Oh god, there's too many jellyfish. Hey guys, welcome to another Opcast. We're in Sydney, Australia, Northern Beaches, and I'm lucky enough to have a good friend of mine, Mr. Taj Burrow, all the way from Western Australia. It feels like I've been chasing you from Hawaii <laughs> all the way back to Australia and back. Yeah, yeah. No, I you threw got you. Me. I got you now. I threw you out of a plane. Yeah. And then you ran away. You got scared and ran away on me. Exactly. That away. was enough. You ran away all the way home, but I finally got you, Taj. Thanks so much. Thanks, mate. Good to see you. On the Opcast. How you been? My pleasure. Oh, I've been good. Been good. Um, well, I mean, I'm nursing a knee injury. You but are. Besides that, life's really good. Yeah. What uh, happened with the injury? Tell us. Um, so I blew my ACL to pieces, which is the ligament right in the middle of your knee. Mm. Um, surfing? It's an awful one to do because uh, it takes so long to recover. Yeah. But um, yeah, I did it surfing. Uh, so I was on a family trip uh, up north, west WA. We were camping at Nauru mm -hmm. and um, it was the best trip of my life. Fam best family tr holiday we've ever had. We just had so much fun. We got fun waves, caught heaps of amazing fish, and it's just such a good environment for, for kids as well, because our little girl's like two and a half, nearly three in October. So she just loved it, which made it easier, you know, for, as, for me and mum. And we had a couple other family friends up there where the little one could run around with, and just a sick family holiday. Everything just went so smooth. There's no phone reception too, which is probably the reason I've I would um, give it the best holiday ever <laughs> because you're just out of, just off the grid and mm. it feels amazing. No one bothering you, you can just kind of really settle into that family holiday groove. Mm. Um, so anyway, had the best time ever and then towards the end of the trip, I went to surf the bluff and it was about two or three foot and we went there kind of just to cruise on the point because you know how beautiful that spot is. Yeah. We went to have a couple beers and just meet up with a couple friends that live at the bluff. Yeah. So we were sitting on the point just chatting to all our friends, having a great afternoon. And um, there's lots of grommets at the bluff now that surf and they're all just little frothers. And I know a few of them and uh, they, they 
they started heading out and they were ripping these little waves, like mm. two to three foot bluffs, still an incredible wave. Yeah. And I was like, fuck it, I'm out there, I gotta go. <laughs> and I just went out in board shorts, just so beautiful in the water. And I was just cruising. First wave, I got like fast little left, it is, you know what it's like. Yeah. Got like a bunch of long little floaters, just like cruising with it, had the best time. And then paddle back out, a couple of groms got waves and then on just my second wave, I took it off and I, um, I just went to do another floater, but I kind of just mistimed the lip a little. And I went up onto the lip, but my board kind of dropped down onto the face. And it's like, I, it's like I disconnected from my board. And then when I reconnected, it's like my board was going one way and my leg was going the other. Oh. And it just went bang. Like it was like a lightning bolt hit my, my front leg. And um, I just lay there floating. And you know that feeling when you know you've done a serious injury oh. and like everything flashes in front of your eyes. Like, oh my God, how bad is it? I'm going to miss this trip, that trip. Am I going to be able to pick up my daughter? Like you think of everything yeah. in, a, in a millisecond. Uh, anyway, and I just kind of floated in and, and limped up the rocks and uh, yeah, and hobbled back to our camp at Nalu, wondering what I'd done. And obviously we're so far into the desert that yeah. there's no one to give me advice on what it actually could be. Yeah. Everyone's barking their advice at yeah. me and all I could do was, you know, ice it and elevate it. And anyway. Cognosis. Packed up camp, headed back to Perth and uh, got an MRI to find out that I'd blown my ACL. Yeah. So. Um, I had to go in for surgery, which uh, fortunately I got to see a good surgeon pretty much straight away. So I did the injury on the 1st of June, got surgery on the 8th of June. And yeah, now I'm just going hard at the rehab. Um, Out of the water for? Oh shit, it's a tough one. They say, um, they say nine months, roughly. Um, it's a weird one, depending what sport you're trying to get back into. They say six to nine months to yeah. recover. And then they say up to 12, easy, if not more, to be 100% back to where you left really? off. Yeah, big, so big injury. It's really common in football players, and it takes them 12 to 15 months. Oh, for football. For football, because Probably that's not. way more yeah. extreme. Yeah. Um, but surfing, yeah, I'm, I'm going so hard on the, on yeah. the, the rehab yeah. and the physio and like doing all the right things, trying to eat the right food and just do everything for it. I put so much love into it. I'm just rubbing it going, <laughs> come really? on. Annika. Uh, yeah, all that good stuff. All that good yeah, stuff. all the herbal creams and just doing everything <laughs> I can. I yeah. still ice it and elevate it every day. And it's feeling amazing. The good thing about it is you can kind of get around normally and do most of your other activities. Like um, they want you to be weight bearing on this injury almost straight away. So um, I can do all the other shit that I've been putting off basically. I just, I can't surf. so. It's uh, it's been a blessing in disguise. Yeah. I've, you know, it's made me start training again, yeah, right. which I wasn't. Yeah. I was being so lazy with training, and it was just like this is whipping my life, life into gear. Like, <laughs> life after training. tour. Yeah, life exactly. after tour, you forget about training. Mate, I stopped the day that I finished my last heat. <laughs> I didn't do any training, and this is exactly a result of that. Yeah, right. So this is making me train again, yeah. and it actually feels good to be kind of striving towards a goal. Yeah. Like I've got this. All right, fuck. It's like I've got um. I, you know, it's like a contest starts in nine months. Yeah, like right. I've got to get ready for this, yeah. you know, this nine months. On. Like I'm trying to get better before that nine months, yeah. you know. Um, well, you're going to be, you're going to be all fit again and maybe make a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't go that far. I just want to surf, you know, I just yeah. want to surf again. No, no competing. Um, <laughs> um, although I'm missing a couple of fun novelty events like the Maldives event. That's, oh, that's yeah. on in about a week. And Is I'm it so really? Never, I'm missing oh no, that because one. you won it last year. And yeah. so if you win it, you yeah, get invited you get, back. You get the call up and... Oh, and so you're going to have to take a rain check on that and get invited next well, that's, year. That's the plan, hopefully, yeah. 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 I'm sure they'll give you that. But I was check. talking to like Josh Kerr and, and Freddie Patasha, like because oh, I was that. trying to get people that I knew to come yeah. and they all got the invite. And I was yeah. like, yeah, boys, we're on. And then I'm the one that had to pull out. <laughs> so I was devastated about that one. But um, oh, but like goodness. I said, I'm getting so much shit done that I've been putting yeah. off. So mm -hmm. it's been, a, it's been, I'm picking the positives out of it and I'm definitely at peace with my injury. Like mm. I, I'm, uh, I'm making it productive. My downtime has been productive. Beautiful. Well, let's talk about that retirement. <laughs> well, yeah, it's insane, really. I mean, I just wish I, I was able to, you know, pick up and go surfing. Like you, yeah. everyone would have seen that swell that just hit uh, Indo. And, yeah. Um, it was just, that was a monumental swell in my books. It was like, how, it obviously hits WA first. And how, and, um, and how was it when it hit your? It was just out of control. In biggest of I've ever up. seen it. I have to say it was the biggest I've ever seen it out wow. front of my house. It was monstrous. As far as you could see, it was just mountains of white water and it was breaking in spots that I just thought it was way too deep of the ocean and to it break. Breaking. It was still breaking, just wow. crazy big. And um, I couldn't stop staring at it. I was just like all day because it's 
been really wild and stormy and I actually enjoy it when it's wild and stormy at home just to watch the ocean because it's just so big and wild and raw and that swell especially was just really exciting to watch. Mm. But um, yeah, I obviously knew it was going to be to go to Indo and some places in Indo were just going to light up and a lot of people headed for Nias and I saw some footage of that. Everyone yeah. probably saw the boat go over the, the boat, falls yeah, and we all saw that. the boat go over yesterday. That you one, couldn't miss that. Everyone was posting that one. No, um, one. no one was out there. It looked too big to ride. No, there was guys out there. there, was there. Guys yeah, out yeah, there. yeah. Okay. Heaps of crew, but um, apparently the big sets were not surfable. Not unless surfable. you towed them maybe, but they weren't yeah. paddleable. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was psycho. It was like mm. doubling up 15 foot wow. slabs almost. But it looked scary and sketchy, like it was almost pinching as well. Yeah, it was. So, um, I don't know. But there would have been some other spots in Indo, I reckon, that would have really flared up. Oh, yeah. But anyway, yeah, retirement's great. Retirement's except great. for missing those swells. Missing that, yeah. yeah. But retirement, yeah. I mean, the, um, <coughs> retirement and fatherhood, I mean, like, you um, you guys got pregnant before you left the tour, like the same year you, yep. you decided... Um, to yeah, leave I pretty much door. retired because we had a child. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that was my that was my number one reason. But it's perfect. Like, how's fatherhood? I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, it's so sick. It's the best thing ever. But the thing I find weird is everyone, every single person, tells you, "Oh, it must be time for a second one." I'm like, "Why does everyone say that?" <laughs> I swear, it's people with two kids. Yeah, right. <laughs> try and convince you <laughs> to go through the same hell they're going through. <laughs> so everyone says, "You got to have another one." I'm like, "Why do I have to have another one?" <laughs> So we're thinking one's enough. I mean, oh yeah, oh, yeah. I hate how the long? pressure of everyone ha- like saying that. I'm just like, why do you have to have two kids? I mean, no. I don't get it. I'm an only child. I'm just like, yeah, one's are. enough. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, yeah, I, we're, yeah. we're still not sure, but not I'm sure. pretty happy with one yeah. because you really lose a lot of freedom. And and part of my, you know, my whole retirement was to kind of chase surf and get waves. And I want to be out of, I want to be out of rip waves and yeah. get tubed and stuff while I still, you know, am mm. surfing good. I want to be able to get good waves and uh, mm. just take advantage of, you know, a bit of freedom. Mm-hmm. And children does not give, they don't give you freedom, <laughs> you no. know, they really <laughs> lock you down. So, um, yeah, I've been enjoying it, but it's really nice to be able to sneak away when we get the chance. Like, um, my partner Beck did a trip to, she, went, she got to go to Paris with like, her girlfriends um, not that long ago. She did 10 days in Paris and I looked after the little one and then she gives me the chance to sneak off to Indo for, the, you know, swells like that one. So, um, how was that with one child, one all by yourself? Well, it was actually amazing. I was, was really it? scared because it was pretty yeah. daunting. Ten days. Oh, she must be off the off the boob already. She's off the boob, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, sh- yeah, ten days alone was pretty daunting, wow. but um, it ended yeah, it up being amazing. Yeah. And it's kind of funny. A lot of mums will agree with me. That's like little ones. I swear they behave better for their dads, it's and they're true. and more they're more needy and clingy and whiny yeah. and whingy when mums are around. It's so true. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, that makes sense because she was really good to me, and mm. I didn't want to say it to Beck because she she can be a little brat like all kids can yeah. uh, when mums are around. But she was such a little angel for me, yeah. and I had the best time. Best time. And, and she was I, like, I can't believe it. She's act, she's so <laughs> so well behaved for you. And I was I like, think it's. And all mums have said it to me since. Yeah. Like they always do that. I think it's they think, wow, I must be in trouble. I better be good. Mum will come. <laughs> mum might come back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so oh, I had a good run. Ten days was sweet. Yeah, that's it. Um, that's so cool. But yeah, I, yeah, all good. So retirement. Let's go way back to when you first qualified. Um, one of the only guys I think that um, qualified and didn't take it up. I mean, yeah. To this day, people would like pay lots and lots of money to you know get that spot and yeah you, and sure. you gave it up then you how old were you at that stage like i mean you qualified at a, um, quite 17, a young age I 17. i was doing the qs when i was 17. and you got the spot but you, got the spot, you, you didn't so take the spot no and the reason it's pretty wild for yeah to look back it's definitely a wild decision yeah um what it was, was mainly influenced from morris cole at the time okay because was he was my shaper, shaper and he also took on kind of a managerial role yeah. as well okay and he kind of just convinced me that it was a good idea <laughs> <laughs> and i was 17 yeah and i was like yeah okay pretty I, convincible. I, I was so yeah he is, he is, <laughs> he is. And i was just um so young and you know kind of oblivious to what i was actually getting myself into mm. i didn't really know and i didn't really feel ready to face, you know, the big dogs, including yourself. Yeah. Um, I was, I was felt so young and immature. Um, and I, I don't know, he just convinced me of how easy I qualified and you can do it again next year, no worries. And um, I just decided, yeah, okay, I'll just do another year to, to um, you gain know, find my competitive or, feet, yeah. gain some experience and just grow up a little. 
And um, well, which was the case. I mean, you were that good that I mean, it was you know well, bound to shit, happen. I don't know. I mean, but I mean, if it was like now, I mean, if it was like now, would it? Would you yeah, do I, it? No, I don't, can't imagine not. anyone doing it now because yeah. it, it is. You, know, you wouldn't do it now. It's, it's a lot so more competition. Throat. You'd be like, no way would you do it, eh? Yeah, I guess not. No, no. I mean, you'd have to be some kind of <laughs> psycho confident person to do that nowadays. Like a Felipe Toledo. Yeah, or well, he could do it. But I mean, as good as he is now, kind yeah, of thing. You I know, know what I mean? <laughs> not maybe back then. Yeah, exactly. I can't. Yeah. I can't see it happening now. No. But um, at the time, it just seemed right, and I went for it. And um, it was funny because, um, so the year that I. I qualified at 17. I remember I got, I made the final at the, co- there was a contest up on the sunny coast at Marijidor, I think. It was. And um, I got fourth in the final um, when I was 17. Yeah. And that's the year I qualified. Mm-hmm. And the very next year I went back to the same event and um, I got, I made the final again and got fourth again. And it was like the exact same result <laughs> the next year after. And I was like, oh yeah, that's good. I'm on the same track. As, yeah, right. So you, I'm yeah. going to qualify. Yeah. Kind of thinking it, it gave me this weird feeling like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to make it. I've got the same result as I did last year. And let's so let's keep going forward. And, yeah. and yeah, that year yeah, went well for me. And I, that's when I qualified and, and made the tour. Yeah. So yeah, 18 years, I, I was 18 when I did the QS again. So my first year on the tour would have been when I was 19. It was 19. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think on those, because when we first met, I mean, oh, well, I can't really exactly remember when we first met. You probably would have, probably would have been through Jack McCoy. Well, yeah, filming, the first time probably. we met would have been when you were filming, like, With probably Bunyip Dreaming stuff. Yeah, and we and went when to... When you were in West Oz. And we went to, like, one of your spots, that little right-hander. Mufflers. M- mufflers, yeah, yeah, probably have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember we set this a few spots. Um, but, yeah, I definitely went to Mufflers with you. That was the first time we met, and mm. I was way younger then. Uh, I can't even remember what year that was, but I was... It was before you started competing, eh? Yeah, it yeah. was before I definitely started competing at that level. I was just a little grom and I was just, yeah, my eyes were popping out of my head when I saw you <laughs> and Louie coming to surf yeah, right. at like all my local spots. Yeah. I remember you and Louie actually surfing uh, Three Bears, just one of our yep. local spots, and I was just blown away because <laughs> I remember seeing like, I surfed with you and I saw that a couple turns that you guys did in the free surf, I was just going... Oh, look at that, that's how it's done. And then I remember seeing the same turns in the movie that Jack made, like Bunyip Dreaming, you know, however many months later, and I was just so proud, just telling my friends, I was there for that turn, they can see me on the shoulder. <laughs> like it was just so, one of those sick moments where I was kind of a part of that session. Yeah. Even though I wasn't in the movie, I was just like, I was there. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that would have been one of the first times yeah. we met. And then, and then you were nice enough to let me stay with you in Hawaii for a few times. Like yes, that you did. That. I was going to mention that. You stayed with um, me and Beatrice back yeah, in the day, my first Right Rocky at Rocky's yeah. there. That yeah, was at Rocky's. Sick. How sick was that? We used to serve Rocky's every Mate, day. Amazing. I know you taught me everything I knew about the Ronnie Bowl. Yeah. Take that into every <laughs> session I have out there, even today. And then um, we competed in like the Pipe Masters. We both had heats at Pipe. Yeah, back in yeah. The, and some big, some big days at Pipe. Yeah, were both shit. kind of scary. Oh, definitely, both yeah. Some scary days. No, that was crazy. That was such good memories. That was good memories. And you had a lot of success. You won 12 <coughs> events on tour. You had, you had some world title races. Um, mm. and, uh, t- tell us about um, some of those world title races. You came close. Yeah, well, the first one was with you. Mm. <laughs> that was my second year on tour was um, 99, yep. which 99. is your title yep. year. Yep. And um, yeah. Well, I didn't really consider that a race. I've said this before. I mean, I was, I was just fresh to the tour and just kind of doing my thing, trying to f- find my feet and learn how to compete against you guys. And um, yeah, next minute I found myself, you know, runner up to you with your first world title. And uh, <laughs> that was uh, the sickest feeling ever. I never even considered myself a challenger just because I was in awe of, of you, of course. And, um, and I was just happy, happy with, with where it was. So um, yeah, that was it. But a nice introduction to um, you know to to being in that position for sure, but yeah, had a few cracks since. I think I got second again. It was yep. in two thousand seven to Mick, Mick's yep. first title, and um, yeah, I've had some wins and some ups and downs like you do on tour. But it's mm. overall, it's, yeah, it's been amazing. You had a lot of success. Twelve event wins. Yep. Brazil was kind to you. Yeah, Brazil was good. I think I got three there. Yep. Um, that was always. Yeah, strong event for me, Brazil and the Gold Coast probably my strongest. Pipe yeah. my masters. Pipe masters, yeah, that was that's a big box to tick, and I managed to tick it. That was insane. What was your what was your most special one? Was it that or? Um, I mean that's probably the most prestigious, mm. and it, it felt really felt really good. I, I remember it quite vividly because it was a big event, and um, 
big moment for me. Uh, I competed against Kelly in the final and uh, I just felt really, really confident. And me and Johnny Gannon, who was my trainer at the time, we had a little moment right before I went out for the final. And um, I just remember him just hit me on the back, just going, you know, good luck or whatever. And I just said, I've got this. Like, I was just so confident. <laughs> yeah. um, the wind turned a little on short, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Especially, that's why I probably felt more confident because yeah. um, I figured we were going to resort to manoeuvres and I had a really good short board that I stepped down to. Yeah. And um, I was just planning to go out there and just rip a couple because backdoor is such a high performance wave when yeah. it's kind of light on shore. Mm -hmm. So I just, um, I just felt really confident and just felt good and happy and, and um, yeah, and I got the win and it was just, it felt insane, especially just because I had that feel, that gut feeling like I was going to get it. And I told Johnny with confidence, I've got this mm. and then I won it and yeah, felt fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. But um, far You're out, winning any event's good. No, right? no. It's so fun. Yeah. But you're like, you're so close to getting a world title. I mean, the year you retired, I mean, I know you had the baby on the way, but were you thinking like, far out, it was so close and I had that career and I was so close to a world title, like, no. could, or should I stay and maybe get it? No, or don't think was about it, it beyond, you didn't think? No. 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 I don't feel one bit concerned about not getting no. a world title. No. Mm -hmm. I just don't feel like that kind of person. Like I, no. I, I um, feel like my surfing's hot and cold. I can't really maintain like, confidence throughout a whole year mm. and I just I just I don't I don't really care I don't know I think I don't care now like I mm. it was it, it shook me up at the time like I've been so close and mm. what do I need to do do mm. I need to change this or that but now that I've done it all I'm just so happy to have experienced the highs and lows mm. of competing you know I've won 12 events mm. and you know you, you, you obviously lose a lot more than you win so mm. it's like an emotional roller coaster but just to to have those those victories and to have just made a career from surfing, it's just like, I couldn't be happier. You're satisfied. It, so satisfied. You seem satisfied. And um, I know, yeah, the world title's definitely a thing I didn't get, but I just don't consider myself that, that kind of person. Yeah, like, right. It doesn't really, doesn't shake me up at all. Seems like you can still make a comeback. Ah, no, 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 <laughs> no chance. I'm, I'm happy to watch from the sidelines. I still watch everything. It's you fun do. to watch. Oh, oh yeah, man. I was going to ask I you that. You still, do you watch it, the WSL? Yeah, yeah. I watch everything. You it's so it. funny. My parents, um, they, they're the same. Like they, they? They've obviously watched everything I've done since I was competing with you when the internet, like the, <laughs> the, the, uh, the webcast was just... Um, no vision, just scores dropping yeah. on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> they used to watch that, that like see, stare at a blank computer screen and see scores drop down for a person. <laughs> They've been there since day one, so yeah. it was funny. My parents thought that when I retired, they wouldn't watch anymore. Yeah. They watch everything, <laughs> every heat still. Yeah, they just they can't do. resist. It's just like in I your blood. I think I'm the worst. I get busted with my missus watching a one star in Japan in <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> You're kidding me. No, I've been busted doing that too, especially when I had my knee injury. Like early days, I was watching everything. <laughs> one star in Japan. How is Vance and Nance? Are they still surfing? They're good, and stuff? mate. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I just aspire to be like them when I'm there. Yeah, right. they, are, they surf every day That's still. That's so cool. They're she so still swim with dolphins. Oh, yeah, she gets the chance for she, sure. Yeah. Around, She's eh? just an ocean lady. She, she is, just eh? lives in the ocean. And, um, they're so, they just got such a good program. Like they, they live down south in Yelling yeah, Up yeah. for six months of the year and then they go right up to the Northwest Cape, Exmouth. Oh, they do in, six months. Oh, they do in for the so summer. So they've got this endless summer set yeah. up where they're always, as soon as it gets too cold and wild mm. and woolly at home, mm. they just head north for warmer waters and um, they've just got such a good program. And I always laugh because my parents get along so well and I've worked out why. Mm. Because they're compl I'm completely different um, time zones, mm. <laughs> not time zones, but like their schedules for yeah. the day. So my mum will go to bed at about seven, mm. seven at night. Mm -hmm. And then my dad stays up to about, I don't know, 11 or 12. Yeah. Like he kind of, he jams, yeah. he plays guitar, so yeah. he jams yeah. in the studio and just, he's a full night out. Mm. And so anyway, my mum gets up at about five, she has coffee and she goes, surf check, has a surf, mm. whatever, comes back at like nine or 10, right as my dad's waking up. Yeah, right. And then they cross paths then and my dad goes, <laughs> <laughs> so goes afternoon. and surfs all day, and then they, then my, and when he's coming home, my mum will go for a little arvo surf or check it or whatever, <laughs> and then they finally come together in at about middle. four or five in the afternoon, and they they have red wine together, yeah, 
and then they have dinner, and then that's it. Cross over. And that's that little time where they cross over. I'm just like, no wonder you guys get along so well. You only see, you only hang with each other for like a couple of wines in the afternoon. Perfect. It's like the perfect relationship. <laughs> so yeah, they've got a good program. So, um, but they are. They besides the wine, they do so much. They just look after themselves so well, and um, mm. it's a huge inspiration for me because they've always taught me, you know, with you know good food and look at things to look after yourself with and. And um, I'm really trying to take that on board and just to um, just to be happy and healthy and still surfing mm. like they are at their age. That's all I want to do. Sounds and like that's the way to do it because they're proof in the pudding right there. Like. Sounds like the perfect recipe for longevity and everything. Well, yeah, it does. I know. Relationships and, uh, and life. Perfect. Let's, um, <coughs> so what are you up to now in, in the movies that you've done? And I know you're doing more clips. What, what's going on with... Um, the clips that you're doing at the moment. Oh. I mean, I know you're not doing anything at the moment, yeah, but yeah, you've been making time. some some recently. Yeah, oh, I've got a bit of downtime obviously right now, but um, all I'm doing is just trying to like get good waves, like I told you. All, yeah. I, all my, my main goal is just to get tubed and find some find good waves, good uncrowded waves, and, and film if I, if I have the chance. Um, I haven't done that much of it, but I have had a couple of good sessions um, like I had a really good session at Indo, which I put out a clip with Globe yep. just recently, and yep. that was that was pumping. That was like a huge swell, mm. and um, I got the opportunity to be right where I wanted in the Mentalis, and, yep. and I got sick waves at HPs, and yep. yeah, uh, that was sick. I got to take a, a film a mate of mine, Dave Fox, and um, yeah, I just want to do more trips like that. Mm. Um, it's obviously you know companies love good content like that. Mm. And, my sponsors are, are, you know, nice enough to, to stick around and look after me still um, to do stuff like that, mm. um, as well as other things like with Billabong, I I do a lot of um, kind of like retail tour stuff where mm. I go and visit um, retail crew yeah. and, and, and contests and just different different regions around the world that Billabong um, would like to, you know, a bit of my presence yeah. and, um, you know, I go along and just drink a beer with some crew and yep. talk stories from the yep. tour. You know, a lot of lot you've yep. done a lot I of that do, too. I do a lot of that and it's too, it's, yeah. it's fun. You know, it's people really really tune in when you talk stories about the tour. They they really want to hear that kind of behind the scenes yeah, stuff. I and sure um, do. and it's it's easy and fun for me to talk about. Mm. You know, we've got heaps of good stories from over the years. So that's kind of my role at Billamong as well as surfing. Um, but yeah, my main goal is obviously to to just get, get sessions like get that sessions and like get that. footage like yeah. that and um and yeah. And but what um, about the sesh that you have with Mark Matthews? I can't, I've got to talk about that one on the right. Oh, the right, When yeah. he pulled in behind you. Yeah, And yeah. you pulled into the barrel and, and, yeah, it, and that, it clipped you. That way was massive. Yeah, that place is wild. Are you going to do that again? Because you hurt yourself then too. I did. That was, um, I saw my Take shoulder, my shoulder. shoulder. Take us through that wave. I mean, what happened? I mean, and because he, he like, he sacrificed himself to get the shot. Oh, yeah, he's the animal in that picture. <laughs> he's, he's psychotic. And what um, happened? Like, well, what happened was, was we... That, did you catch, catch a wave before that or was it... That no, I'll tell you from the start. Okay. We were, so uh, I hadn't surfed the right yet and I had always been in the back of my mind but I haven't, hadn't committed to it. Mm -hmm. And um, both Sam McIntosh and Mark Matthews called me and said, oh, we want to go surf the right. Mark wants to shoot, um, shoot someone surfing. He wants to be behind. R originally, they were going to get uh, Laurent, Laurent Pajol because yep. he does that angle mm -hmm. really well. Uh, but Laurent couldn't do it for some reason. Mark was going to be the surfer originally. Laurent mm. was going to be behind. Mm. Laurent pulled out, and Mark was like, "Fuck it, I'll do it. I'll shoot. I'll shoot the photo." And they're like, "Who can we get?" And, and Sam and Mark suggested me, and I was like, "Fuck, why me?" <laughs> uh, but I was like, "All right, um, let's do it." And um, so I committed to it, kind of thinking it wouldn't happen, maybe. And All then right. it wasn't long after I committed by phone call that this, this swell popped came. up, <laughs> and I was like, "Shit!" They called me and said, "Oh, we're on. We're coming," and I was just completely terrified oh, <laughs> just this goodness. shiver went through my body like oh my god i'm going to the right to do this shoot i've never even been there seen <laughs> it don't know what i'm riding and um yeah so i i got there and i didn't have the equipment that most people have i had no inflation vests or anything so i just wore a couple weddies <laughs> and, you didn't um, even wear a vest i had um uh just a little um but not a blow little, one not no, a pull no, one just a little yeah oh and no, i had one of those tube suits a bill long mate with a bit of padding yeah okay so i wore that yeah. under a steamer uh -huh. so i had a little bit of padding too, yeah. but not padding. much buoyancy no. i was pretty scared but i was you know i looked pretty big and muscly <laughs> so i kind of felt pretty confident <laughs> <laughs> anyway when I, when we got there um we pulled up and there's already a few people into it and um i remember mark i just i was just so freaked out i just wanted to check the place out i wanted to see a few breaks yeah. 
And um, I was like, Mark was like ripping out the rope. He's like, you're on, we're on, like, let's go. Yeah, I was like, like wait, 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 just wait, let's, let's just watch a couple. And he's like, mate, the one you see is the one you don't get. <laughs> and I was just like, what do you mean? That, that, that saying of his has traumatised me ever since. I'm like, it's, so, it's so true. <laughs> But it's like, it just was the last thing I wanted to hear at that time. It's like, the one you see is the one you don't get. We're out there. I was like, oh, fuck. And I just got in on the rope and just whipped out the back, waiting Straight for away. a set. Not even seeing, like, what it does or anything. And I was, and it was, it's, it's such a, a true, honest saying, too, because it's true. You know, so often you'll pull up and you'll yeah. watch a couple and you'll see some crazy ones and then you'll decide to go. If you just go straight away, then you'll get those you ones get that those you're ones. watching. Mm-hmm. But, so I really, I like that, that, um, Mark Matthews' knowledge there, it's, yeah. he's, uh, he's, he's been there and done that and he knows. But um, yeah, so we just waited for a couple waves and we got, out, got into rotation and um, we took a couple uh, waves prior to that, that oh, one. Yeah. And um, we got a couple that, when you get the right one out there, it's, there's so much room and it's so easy to navigate. Mm. Um, you just roll into it and it's quite often you outrun the right because mm-hmm. it's, it's so big and it's moving quite slow mm-hmm. you can you can the lip can almost be hitting the the, uh, the water and you can backdoor it like you really want to come in from behind it mm-hmm. otherwise you outrun the tube mm-hmm. really easily um and mark that was another thing mark said you can never be too deep out here <laughs> and i was like really <laughs> he's like nah you always run outrun the tube and i was like it was good advice though because we did outrun the tube so many times yeah. we did it quite a few times we got a few really fun just big bowls where we're both in the pit laughing and smiling, like really round, easy ones to come out of. Mm. And we were just looking around with all this room, like like pretty much high-fiving in the tube. Wow. And um, and like a couple of times, I remember one so clearly that like, I kind of took a slightly different line to him and I kind of went up into it and slowed down a little bit, whereas he was coming in fast. And we were both in this big tube and I kind of slowed down just to get a little bit deeper. And I remember standing in this thing and he caught up to me and he pushed me out of the tube and we both we both came out, but he had to give me a push in the back because he was coming in a bit hotter yeah, than me. Yeah. And I just remember it was just such a funny situation and <laughs> such a bizarre sensation yeah, too. Right. Like just standing in this big tube, looking around. It's like in slow motion, like yeah. your mates next to you, like we're both going, fuck, this is sick. Oh, wow. Anyway, it was so much fun and we got a few fun little clips and a few photos, but then um but then that a bigger set came yeah. and um that one was was a lot bigger than the rest. Yeah. And uh the one thing it does out there on the scary ones, it does this fly trapping pinch on the end yeah. where, you know, it just, it can just swallow you and there's no exit. Yeah. It's terrifying. They're the yeah. ones that just send you to the bottom of the ocean. Um, and yeah, I remember we we just pulled out of the water and I just looked at it. It was a lot bigger lump than the rest. And, and uh, Mark's behind me, so I'm just like, I'm just like, Fuck, you know, I, I'm much I'm much happier in my shoes than where he is because yeah. he's got that big camera like hanging off his wrist. It's a big camera, and um, yeah, we uh we just backdoored the thing basically, and um, I remember just looking at it going, holy shit, we are deep, and um, I just remember taking this kind of high line, kind of as you do when you're you know you're kind of trying to yeah. to pump through a tube if you're pretty deep, and it was the complete wrong thing to do at such a wave with the magnitude of the right. And I completely butchered the line I took. I just, I went too high. And, um, and I was in this thing and it was just like so big and so long. And I was looking at it going, fuck, this is the biggest tube I've ever been in. Mm. And I, I, I kind of, rem- I remember being, almost having a sense of calmness come over me. Like, all right, you've put yourself in this position. Just do everything you can to get to the end. You know, yeah. like just, I kind of relaxed. I yeah. didn't, it was the wow. weirdest thing. Like I actually felt at ease being in there just because I was like, all right, I've got myself in this spot. Just do what you can to get out. And I remember taking this high line and as soon as I did it, it was like I tried to do a big pump and then just do another one to get out of it. And I remember so much water ocean moving that I got kind of stuck on that line and I couldn't quite get down low enough. Mm. And whereas I should have stayed low. Anyway, I'm just thinking, Mark's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> He's gone. Yeah. Like yeah. he must be getting so flogged. He, like I'm deep. He must be <laughs> just already, already getting smashed, and he's in the worst spot. Like I couldn't believe the position he put himself into. But um, yeah, we both just rode it as long as we could. Mark got lit up right in the worst spot you can get smashed. He got like he had to deal with my track as well as the wave pinching. I got right to the end and fell right on the end, mm. and I cartwheeled and yeah. got pinned down so long underwater Did it you? was like the longest i've ever been underwater really? yeah b- by far i was just 
I was thinking to myself, all right, you're, you're falling off at the right. It's the first wipeout I'd had too. Yeah. Uh, and I was just... Relaxing. Um, doing, I was totally relaxed, just doing these huge strokes to the surface. And I just remember doing it for so long. And I was just going, wow, this is crazy how deep I am. And I just kept doing it and doing it. And then I was like, I've, I've never been this deep in the ocean or been under the water this long. And I started paying towards the end. I was probably just doing these on yeah, by yeah, the yeah. end. And I remember I just came up and I was like, kind of seeing stars, like, you know, real lightheaded. Yeah. And like, that was a long hold down. And, um, and I was, then, then my thoughts went to Mark. I'm like, holy shit, what's happened to Mark? And I just looked around and um, both our boards were kind of floating, you yeah. know, in, on the inside. And um, Mark honestly didn't come up for another 30 Did seconds. No, no way. it was so long. And I was just like, going, oh my God, he's dead. Like, I was just like, he's under too long. You can't stay in the water that long. It was like... There was his, not, not his, another his, way. His, his wipeout was like 45 seconds long or something. It was something ridiculous. And how and, was he when he came up? And I just up? thought he was gone. And I was so scared because I'd never experienced a right. And I was just yeah. like, surely this is just too long. It's too long. And uh, eventually he came up and um, now, was he? he was bleeding from his oh, ears and his, oh, his lip and and his head. Like, he, had, yeah. he, had, he was... He was fucked up oh. his ears popped underwater and his, his camera hit him in the head and like everything oh just goodness. mangled him yeah it was heavy and um the ski came and picked him up and he was just like laying on the ski and, oh. but yeah it was got the it, shot, it was got the shot <laughs> yeah oh my but that's pretty regular occurrence when you go to the right i've been a few times since and those kind of injuries those kind oh, you of went back. Are, are pretty common like people get hammered down there like kirby knee kirby hit kirby brown hurt his knee last time i was there and you, you see people with their head down on the back of the ski almost every session. Like, it's a radical wave and oh. people get really hammered out there. And, um, yeah, I'm happy Mark made it out, made, oh. it, made it out alive. And I wrapped it up to that. Story. I was like, I'm done. And you know who was there at the time? Russ, Russ Bjork was there and he was such a grom yeah. and he was going mad. Was he? Yeah, like, once I kind of, once I had that wipe out, um, I called it quits because I was pretty terrified. And uh, then Russ... Russ had a, a turn at getting a bunch of waves and he got some sick ones. Wow. But um, anyway, that was an experience. It's a good story. You made a bunch of really cool movies back in the day when you were still on tour, pretty much. You made Sabotage with Jack McCoy. Yeah. You also made Montage, Fair Bits yeah. and Trilogy. Yeah. They all were very well received, really, re really successful. What was your favourite one? Oh. <laughs> um, you the spot. Yeah, I don't know. Picking a favourite one's hard. I had fun doing them all for sure. The first one was um, a bit of a surprise, like doing a, a profile film um, when I was 17 or 18, yeah. I think. Yeah, it was 18, I would have been, with Jack McCoy, Billabong, like just on me. Mm. It was pretty scary. Mm. Um, but I, I really loved filming and, um, and I was just, I was psyched and I was confident we could get good footage and we, we went for it and it was. It was really fun. I loved it. Um, did a lot of work with Jack, and 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 um, he he shot heaps of sick water footage. A lot of that mufflers wave too. And yeah. But yeah, it was unreal. I loved it. And then um, when I kind of got the feel for it, it was quite a few years down the track. Um, I went to do it again, and um, and I started collecting footage, and we made montage. And um, mm. Rick Jakovic shot yep. a lot of that, yep. and Matt Jai's. Uh, shot a lot and yep. edited it, and um, and you you started editing yourself. Well, I'm not hands on, but okay. I was definitely there for the process. Yep. I really, really loved at that time, and I still do. I really loved being involved with the editing process. Mm -hmm. I love, I love picking the clips and and syncing them up with the right music. You know, whatever feels right, and um, and just being involved in that whole pro whole process. It's the best feeling when you like when the right surf syncs up with the right song and it all comes together. It's just like you get goosebumps when you're in your editing bay. It's just like the best feeling. And, um, and it feels good when it's yourself too. You're like, sick, I'm getting good clips and the music sounds good and it's, it's an amazing feeling. Um, so yeah, I've always loved it. And um, Montage was one of my favorites because of the, some of the footage we got. I, I love that. Um, heaps of rippable stuff from home and some barrels and just, uh, it was quite a bit of a, a collection process to get those clips and it felt good when we finally got to deliver them. And uh, it was well received for sure, people loved it. And then I went on to do Fair Bits, and in that, in that movie I had one session that was definitely kind of monumental for me, or was one, of, one that stands out for me, is when we used a helicopter to film um, just at one of my home breaks, Super Tubes. Uh, there was no one out, fortunate for us, there was no one at surfing, and we, um, we towed in with the jet ski, Jake Patterson towed me in, 
Um, the reason being we towed because we had a helicopter lined up to shoot and um, I don't think anyone had really shot high performance surfing from a helicopter yet and there was no drones or anything then so it was like kind of a, a lot of pressure and a big big moment like a big day we'd organise. The choppers are bloody expensive and we wanted to shoot this surfing and I was like let's just do it at supers. I can get lots of waves out there. You can get tubes and you can do airs. It's a perfect spot and then Snake Jake Patterson was like, why don't we get the ski as well? I'll just whip you in, you'll get way more opportunity. So we did that and um, it ended up being one of my career best sessions. I just got got barrels and did airs and, and the chopper was just like right above me. That was just such a crazy feeling. Like, because I had a couple of the world's best, you know, cinematographers, you know, one in the chopper, one on the water, one on the jet ski. And um, I was so nervous. I was like, what if I have a bad session and I can't even make an air and all these people have invested so much time and money. I was, I was really nervous. Mm. But um, as soon as I made my first air, I was just like, yeah, and the chopper was dead set so close to me. I was just nearly getting blown off by the down draft. Mm. Um, it just felt amazing. When I made my first air, I was like, yeah, there's one in the Mine. bank. Yeah. And I just get, kind of gave momentum of uh, confidence. And, um, and then I just started nailing air after air and I just was like, it felt so good. Every time I'd ride out of an air, this chopper was right there and I just knew all the angles were covered and it just, mm-hmm. it just felt incredible. Yeah. felt like I was surfing in front of it like a, a stadium of people <laughs> and people were cheering or something. I don't know, it's kind of <laughs> gay, but like I just, I felt, it just felt so insane. It felt better than winning a contest or anything. It just felt so rewarding knowing that that was just getting captured from a, a new angle. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, that session just went perfectly. I had so many fun waves and... Jake to- towed me in hours and hours. Wow. I was thank him so much for doing that because uh, it was yeah it was a really sick day for, yeah. for me. And let's talk about airs. I mean, just before your injury, have you been working on airs like oh, since retirement? Definitely slowed down on my. Oh, airs. you slowed down on it. Definitely, them. yeah, yeah. I because you were you were pretty much one of the first ones. I mean, there was Josh Kerr and then you, I mean, and yourself like pretty much the first ones to start. You know, really doing big, you know, airs and making them technical and stuff. Yeah, oh, I've big always loved versus. going to the air for yeah. sure. You know, that's the, was kind of the the priority when when shooting those movies. I wanted mm. to get the best airs I could on yep. film. Um, and then obviously being on tour, I wanted to convert that to competitive surfing too. Yep. So I try and, try and yeah. do it do it all. But yeah, I love doing but airs. That's been you know. But you slow down on things. them now. I definitely slow down on them for sure. Yeah. I kind of just enjoy getting chewed mainly yeah. okay. and just I still. Still do airs, yeah. but I don't like, I don't chase the biggest ramps like oh, some okay. of the crew do. Like, what do you think about the airs now? Do oh, they they're Toledo insane. And yeah, yeah. On that? That's probably why I stopped. <laughs> 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 no, I still love doing airs. Yeah. I um, you know, when you're having those surfs where um, you just some section of it is so obviously made for an air that I I'll, I'll still do an air and yeah. it's the best feeling ever. But I get so psyched out of just doing like a pretty simple straight air. Oh, okay. And um and just riding out cleanly mm. and I just I, I love it still absolutely love mm. it but I just don't chase it as much as I used to like all the groms and all, all the crew at home you know chase a few waves like especially cobblestones is one of them where mm. where John John especially always comes to, mm. every time he comes to WA mm. he chases that that's one of the biggest ramps on the mm. planet and I've surfed it a bunch with all the local guys like um Kale Walsh and Jack Robbo and Sean Manners like all, all the local groms um they go mad out there and they're so sick to watch um but I surfed it with them recently and they were just throwing themselves at the biggest, wildest section because West Oz is pretty powerful. Yeah. And uh, though that wave is just like, it just comes together with such a punch and you've got to really commit to those sections. They're huge. Mm. And um, when you see it on video of John John or whoever doing airs, it looks, it looks really relatively easy and, and like user friendly, like kind of cushioning landings, but it's not, it's so, oh. so gnarly. And um, I was just baffled on how hard those kids were going. I'm just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to hurt myself and I just don't want to throw myself into ramps that big. It's just, it's, you know, it's not my priority anymore. Yeah. It used yeah. to be, but now I, I'm happy to watch them. I'm happy and proud to see them really mm. go at it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just love surfing in general. All yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tubes, calves, airs, anything. I just, yeah, I just love surfing. Because Josh, <laughs> Kurt, I, I, there was talk of Josh Kerr starting up an aerial tour again. Yeah, Did you hear he about is. that? What he do you think did. about that? I did a trip with him just recently. Yeah, did, did he talk to you about that? Yeah, he did. What do you think about that? I good, think it's good sick. Idea. Good idea. Yeah. yeah, that'd be fun to watch. Air, air um, events and air tours, they're, they're always entertaining to watch. Mm. And um, it kind of seems like there's a lot of groms that 
doing the areas that are their priority. So there's yep. a lot of good aerialists out there right yep. now. I think, yeah, so for sure. So if you, yeah, if you put them all together in, in a competition format, I reckon you'd see some crazy shit. I reckon you have. <laughs> so yeah, that'll be, that'll be fun for him, especially. He's a great guy for, for that role. And um, yeah, hopefully it goes good for him. That'll be fun to watch. So Taj, who was your biggest rival on tour? Um, Did you have one? I think a many? couple. A couple. Yeah, okay. I'd say so. I mean, because I've... Uh, you went through a couple of generations. Yeah, <laughs> true. There's been a few, <laughs> few generations. But no, the, my rivals are definitely the, probably the same generation. The few I'd have to think of, it would be Kelly, mm. Andy, Mick and Joel, mm. for sure. Yeah. Uh, those and, the, Andy was a tough one. Oh, Andy was the toughest, for sure. <laughs> we had the most heated rivalry. Um, he Intimidated just, a bit by Andy? Oh, mate. <laughs> like everyone. That guy was just like, he's, he was so intense and he just was so overpowering and just like the biggest force to deal with. And especially with um, the people that had his back was just like so intimidating. Like every event, especially when the waves were serious, he would really come to life. Mm. And he had like, you know, guys like Kyborg driving the ski and mm. he just had this whole, you know, posse. heavy Hawaiian <laughs> posse behind mm, him. Mm. And it's just like, they're all looking at you just growling and you're just like, <laughs> fuck. He's mainly worried about the waves and, and competing against the best surfer in those waves. And then you've got Them. people growling at you too. <laughs> it was just like a bit too overwhelming. Like, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't do that good with, you know, like intense situations like that and <laughs> confrontation like Andy, you know, put it to me. I, I just didn't like it. I just wanted to go and surf and do my own thing and he just would make it so tough. Yeah. And he would win a majority of the heats before we even had it out, wow. for sure. Mm. He was like so hard and so difficult to deal with. Like so many times he would just, it, it was, yeah, yeah, it was gnarly, for yeah. sure. <laughs> But I can't help but love the guy so yeah, much, as yeah. intense as it was, and yeah. as much as we wanted to fucking rip each other's throats out in the water, I just love the guy, yeah. like, even though he, he could be so nasty and, like, aggressive, mm. couldn't help but love him. Mm. Um, but, yeah, Andy was the one, probably, yeah. for, that was the most intense, mainly because we were born the exact same year, yeah. and mm. we had the exact same major sponsor yeah. and the yeah. same goals. We, we wanted to beat each other the yeah. most. That was in, really intense. Um, but yeah, obviously Kelly as well. We've had yeah. mm, heaps of crazy battles and he's been there for the duration, obviously, yeah. of my whole career. And so most of the, yeah, a couple of, most of my wins in finals were against him. So it was like, he, yeah, he was definitely one. And then obviously Mick and Joel, a couple of years later, they were the two next yeah. best, hardest guys to beat. And yeah. I still don't think I've ever beaten Mick Fanning. He beat me really? every single time. No, no <laughs> I mean, I've only got a couple out of, he's probably got me like 20 to four or something like that. He's beat me almost every time. He's mm. just like, as you know, like a cyborg. We started calling him mm. towards the end of his career. He's just like a programmed robot. Nothing mm. would interfere with his, mm -hmm. his um, warm up and his, his, his like a, a approach to a heat. He was just impossible mm. to, to falter. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he, he whitewashed me for so long. And obviously Joel as well. Um, bit better stats against him, but he's still another one that we definitely had a good rivalry. Same sponsor as well, so we we're competitive in that manner, as well as just wanted, we both wanted to win. Yeah. So yeah, those four guys, I think overall, with, with, the, with the four. Yeah. <laughs> and you had a lot of high points on tour. Can you talk about any low points? Oh, definitely. I mean, um, there's lots of highs and lows with competing. Obviously, like mm. I said before, you lose a lot more than you win. Mm. So it's not it's not easy to deal with mm. you know you you hit massive slumps and mm. it's really hard to pick yourself up and maintain your confidence like i said as well it's really hard for me if i surf bad and i lose in an event it's really hard to pick yourself up for the next one and if i see people surfing unbelievably which especially those four guys that i mentioned mm. i always see them surfing i'm just like how do i keep up with that those guys mm. are incredible and um what, is, what do you think about social media Oh, I think it's the devil, especially really? when you're injured. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you're seeing everyone get tubed around <laughs> the world and uh, you're sitting at home trying to stretch my knee to its full <laughs> extension. Um, yeah, no, I don't like it. I, I've threatened to throw the towel in repeatedly really? because I, I hate it, but then I find myself getting sucked back in. Yeah. Um, especially because, 
if you're supported by companies, they want, they yeah. want you to have a presence yes. on there as yes. well, which yes. is obvious. But yep. um, I really do dislike it. Um, like being up at uh, up north on our family holiday, mm. like I told you, being off no the grid, fun, it was yeah. the best thing that's ever happened to yeah. us. We were bright, yeah. like me and my, my girl Beck as well. We were just we were just so relaxed and so happy with just kind of living a real life <laughs> instead of being on just fucking scrolling all day. I mm. hate it. I really yeah. dislike it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was funny because you have to go into town, which is two hours drive to get supplies at some stage of your to camping Canavan. trip. To Carnarvon. Yeah. yeah. And um, as you drive, make that drive out to Carnarvon, you eventually hit reception and your mm. phone starts blowing up and emails start rolling in. And yeah. Phone starts it's all over. And voicemails, emails, everything. It's 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 crazy how much it affected us. We were both just like, just plugged back in, like back into the pipeline, and like, oh no, it, we we got our supplies and we were trying to you know reply to a few urgent things, and then as we started driving back out, you know, Beck was still trying to do some last minute stuff, and we were, she's like, I haven't finished yet, and we were both just like, oh. just at each other's throats. It was like weird. It had such. It just overcame us like the devil and then as soon as we went back into that like yeah. off the grid no reception we both just went oh how, was how good to that fuck going back there like <laughs> it was oh, crazy yeah. like the effect it had on us was so noticeable that it just made me want to live like that like i i really don't like being on my phone but i am i'm just yeah. a sucker to it like yeah. slave to it like everyone such a beautiful spot up there just to our listeners hey it's like it it's a 15 hour drive up from perth Mm. To to Nalu, yeah, yeah it's yeah, about a twenty-hour drive it. from. Shouldn't what? Shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't go there. Shouldn't go there. It's you shouldn't go there. It's a beautiful place, but you shouldn't go there. It's hard to get there, but it is a beautiful place. <laughs> What's your favourite wave in the world? We'll just go some few quick questions. Oh, it's definitely straight front out front of my house. It is. Yeah. Um, rabbit hole. Rabbit hill. Yeah. Rabbit hill. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but it is rabbit a bit of a hole. hole. Yeah. It's a big barrel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's my favourite. Yeah. It's front skis. skis. Front skis. It's out the front and um. And it's just, yeah, it's got a lot to offer depending on the bank. You get barrels, you can do turns, airs, you can do it all. So yeah. it's a sick wave. It, you know, if I had to surf one wave for the rest of my life, that'd probably be it because yeah. it's got so many different moods and mm. it kind of can offer up anything yeah. depending on where the sand is. So that's my favourite. I don't know if this question came from your fans, but are you colour blind? Ah, <laughs> well, I am. You I'm, are? It's colour deficient officially. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm red and green colour deficient. Oh. So, um, yeah, I don't really understand don't it that it. well myself. Okay. And as soon as I tell people that, they're like, oh, what colour is that? What colour is that? Yeah, right. I was and just about to say, what colour are you wearing? I don't know. <laughs> is it blue? <laughs> Kirky. <laughs> no, I, it's, um, yeah. it's one of those ones where it's really quite subtle. Um, like if there's a... Say if there's a big green tree or bush and there's like a little red flower in it, oh. I don't reckon I'd see it okay. until someone maybe pointed it out. And then I'd be like, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. But I can't, I couldn't quite, it's hard to pick up little things like that. And for, blue and purple is also pretty hard for me to tell. Yeah, it's a weird one. Oh. But yeah, colour deficient apparently. And it was a real bummer because when I was a grom, like when you're a real little grom and people ask you what you want to be when you're older, I always want to be a, like, uh, like a a pilot of like a fighter plane oh. you know when you're a little kid you've got yeah, yeah. dreams like that and um and i remember getting my color my testing my eyes and being told i was red and green color deficient and then told i couldn't be a fighter pilot. oh no yeah because you need to see red and green and you're really a little clearly. kid I was so sad I was they like, shouldn't have told me? you that <laughs> it was heartbreaking That's so heavy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um, have you got any questions for me <laughs> oh, you know. I never get to that. I'm nervous. <laughs> um, shit. Well, I don't know. Actually, what would I ask you? Um, what do you reckon? What do you reckon one of the best sessions you've ever had is? I've got a couple in my mind that I can think of. You is it in a jersey or out of jersey? What's the best you you think you've ever? Probably served? half and half. Um, I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. No. Of course it, it does. It, well, I don't know. Like because I've got two in mind. Probably G Land because um, I think at one time. I in think, a comp? Well, I think I was caddying for Louis actually at Speed Reef and it was like in between. When he won? When he won. Yeah, right. And I think it was in between like at a semi or no, in the final or something. And it was like a 10 minute break and the waves were unbelievable and I got to catch a couple. Oh, see, I didn't get to see that. You didn't get to see that, yeah. Really? Just and that was amazing. In a, just like it was eight foot, just wow. perfect with no one out there. And they're waiting for the siren, and I'm just like, he's serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one's Sick. out. 
Oh. And that wave is just like the most amazing wave ever. Yeah, I've so, been there. I mean, that foot. always sticks out to me. Yeah, at high tide, speed reef is just the that's best. Sick. You can oh, get. that's sick. Oh, that's good. You remember I mean, that, that one? That sticks that's one out. Of the best. But um, what about turn wise, ripping? Where do you feel like you really turned it on? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, where I can surf the best, obviously, I think is Bell's Beach. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say <laughs> the Skins event. That's, <laughs> yeah. That stands out to me. Yeah, that's where I feel like your backhand was it's just probably so of, on point. A lot of people's worst wave. They're like, I hate that wave, but I love it. But, yeah, yeah, nah. <laughs> but then on your forehand, a lot of people mainly think, kind of correlate you with backhand. Is like everything and everything. You know, Oki's yeah. backhand, this yeah. and that. But what about um, what about in Sumba, that session with Jack Phil oh, yeah. and you yeah. named it, you got a wave named after you basically yeah, after one session. That Oki's left Sumba section is like, that's one of my favourites. That must have been a yeah. freaking fun day. It was. I that mean, looked I like you were having the time of your life. I know Tubes, it was. turns, just like you had the biggest smile on your face. Because we, it was, the camp, they were just building the camp and it was so raw and it was like, there was just like natives there and they were building the camp and it was nothing. We had Sunny there, Sunny Garcia and it was before like social media, so yeah. we didn't well, know. Everyone wanted to know where it was after yeah. you did that section. And we didn't know if the swell was coming or not. It was two to three foot for like a, two weeks and it was perfect. Yeah. But, but we needed the big swell. Sonny left. He couldn't wait that long. And, um, and then we waited and it was just me and Jack. No I was the way. Only one, I was the only one there. That's so special. And it was perfect. Oh, how sick. And, I, and that was, yeah, actually that was probably one of my most memorable sessions for sure. Yeah, I would have to say. The only be. one there. What movie did it go into? Was it Bunyip Dreaming or Green Yeah, I mean, probably my, a lot of it was in the documentary, probably. Um, but it was, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. But, but originally... Um, originally the Green Iguana, yeah. Green Iguana, was it? I think so. But... My, you don't watch not. much footage of I yourself, don't, do you? I don't, I don't. <laughs> Either way, Taj, it's been such a pleasure. Yeah, I mate. finally got you. Yeah, you got Thank me. That you was for being on the Oc path. Oh, oh, passed. <laughs> the Oc has not passed. I mean, <laughs> no, all good, mate. I thanks, mean, non, thanks for being on the Oc cast. That was fun. I appreciate it. Thank Cheers. you. That's another Oc cast. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Okay, there's too many jellyfish.